All right, let's look at this next one. We've got a wheel uh, that's shown has a weight of 30 pounds, radius gyration of 0.6 feet. This is English units, right? It's attached to a spring, has a stiffness of two pounds per foot, unstretched length of one foot. All right, if the disc is released from rest, and position shown, and it rolls without slipping, determine its angular velocity at the instant G has moved three feet to the left. All right, so <clears throat> I'm gonna use conservation of energy, and each of these could have two terms to it, right? Uh, one half k x squared m g h uh, is the potential energy in a spring and potential energy due to gravity. The kinetic energy uh, linear one half m v squared and rotational one half i omega squared plus any f d or m theta equals this right here just final. All right. So this is in the initial position, this is at the final position. Make sure you can visualize where does it start, where does it end. So it starts at this position shown, and it ends right here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, oh yeah, then the other thing I like to do is remind myself, hey, this is the height of point G, the velocity of point G, the I of G. The height of G, the velocity of G, the I of G, and the that's the G, the center of gravity of the thing that has mass. Don't don't worry about the spring. It's it, we're, we assume all springs are massless, but it is the point G of the object that has mass. All right, I might might need you to calculate this I. Let me go ahead and take a radius of gyration into account. The I using radius gyration is k squared times mass. So this is going to be 0 0.6, 0 0.6 squared times a mass. Now <clears throat> I really should keep up with my units here. Um, this mass is not 30. All right, 30 is the weight. This is 30 divided by 32.2. Um, I this is 0.335. I should keep up with my units. Uh, this is technically a slug right here. Slug feet squared. But here's the thing that I, I always do and I like to do. Just make sure your units are consistent. This 32.2 is feet per second squared. And so this needed to be in feet. This K needs to be in feet. The length... Yeah. If I were you, I would put everything in feet, right? Feet, feet per second, feet per second squared, pound per foot, foot squared, you know, everything in feet. Our other option, if maybe if everything was in inches, then I would need to divide this by however many inches that is, right? 32.2 times 12. Um, and then everything, this, this, everything would be in inches. So be consistent. In every single term, make sure you are <clears throat> being consistent. But if I were you, I would just make sure everything is in feet for, for these English units, which this one sets up pretty well for us. Okay. All right. So, starts from rest. A lot of these start from rest. If you're lucky, it will start from rest. <clears throat> and then the 1 half mv squared and the 1 half i omega squared be equal to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's let's plug this in right here. One half kx squared. I definitely have a spring. Its length initially is five, uh, and its length finally is four. But I'm not going to plug in five right there. What am I going to plug in right there? That is x is the amount of stretch or compression. Its unstretched length is one, so four right there. All right, so one half k. 4 squared. Again, I should keep up with my units. This is pound per foot. This is foot squared. So the units that all of these terms should have are pound feet. The units that all of these terms should have are pound feet. As long as everything is in feet, I'm, I'm pretty good. Okay, oh, sorry. <clears throat> Alright, this is the MGH of point G, so it starts right here. I could could give this a height of 0.75, but it also ends at the same height. Anything that starts and ends at the same height, you can just set at a height of zero. 
Okay. All right. Is there any FD? Is there any FD? Um, no. No. There, there's a normal force now. There could be a force of friction, but this is not kinetic friction. Uh, this is static friction, uh, and static friction doesn't go a certain distance. So there's no FD for static friction. Um, as opposed to sometimes a block that's sliding down, if it has mu k in, uh, sometimes we would, <clears throat> I don't like to do friction, conservation of energy with friction problems, um, but anyway, there's no FD. There's no FD because there's no force that is acting, that's moving a certain distance. And there's no M theta because there's no moment that is being applied here, no concentrated moment that's um, acting a certain distance angle theta. So that's all we have on the left-hand side. All of the energy was in the spring. All of the energy was in the spring. Equals one-half K. What is its X now? Three, right? Because its length is four and its unstretched length is one. So the length minus unstretched length would give me the X <clears throat> plus one-half M. Be careful. This is M. 30 divided by 32.2 VG squared uh, and this velocity is going right here and uh, one half I 0.335 omega squared so there's my equation I've got two <clears throat> I've got two uh, unknowns only one equation two unknowns but is VG equal to R omega yes if I can find the distance R R is the distance that point G is from the center of rotation. Now, this one is a little deceiving, possibly. This is not the center of rotation. Okay, this is not the center of rotation of the object. It's not even center of rotation. It is not a center of rotation at all. What is the object? The object is my wheel. What is the center of rotation of my wheel? Well... Uh, too bad it's not just a wheel that is fixed at its center, a wheel that is just spinning about its center. The center of rotation would be the center of the wheel. This is not the case. This is a wheel that is rolling. It's a complicated problem we've seen before. It is rolling without slipping. It is rolling without slipping. When it is rolling without slipping, what does that tell us? The velocity... Velocity down here is zero. So that, this is the instantaneous center of zero velocity. The very, very bottom point that's touching the ground is the instantaneous center of zero velocity. So this distance r is 0.75. g is 0.75 away from the center of rotation. So right up here in this vg, I'd plug in 0.75 omega and I would square both the 0.75 and the omega. All right, makes sense. And so I'd get the omega is 4.04 radians per second. Um, I've got to specify clockwise or counterclockwise myself. The math doesn't come out. It'll never come out negative. Um, you've got to specify the, 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 the equation tells you that the magnitude of the angular velocity is 4.04. Uh, you've got to specify the direction yourself. Let's step back and look back at what we did. Conservation of energy, wrote it all out. A lot of things were zero. Uh, made sure I'm looking at point G, right? Point G, point G. So the height of point G stays the same. It started from rest. There's no FDs or M thetas. And then this last thing right here, that the velocity of G was R omega. I needed to find the instantaneous center to find the center of rotation at the final position. And the R was 0.75. Plug that in and finish out the math.